Okay, so to get this thing apart, took my angle grinder, ground down this area here where this pin protrudes out. Obviously this plate should be over here. When you get that done, you can just drive with a punch this pin through about a quarter odd inch. And if you look under here, you'll see a little notch on that pin that's going to line up with this notch right here. The pin was here, now it's out, so you can slide this out. If you don't have this notch lined up with this notch, it's not going to slide it out. So when you get that completed, you can go into this, this piece here will just fall out. When you get that completed, you can take off this whole piece if it isn't cracked out. This one's cracked out, so we're just going to take it off two pieces at a time. There's a screw here, screw here, screw here, and screw here. So one part here is just going to be separated. You can see it's all cracked apart from here. There's also a big crack right here on the other section of it. So the spring you see here is hooked into this lock latch piece, putting tension on it this way. So right now it's in the locked down position, but continuing to tear it apart here. Here is the egress handle, right? In this area is where you can see it in the trunk. It's that pull handle, which pulls on this mechanism here. It's not doing it because I've got a little nut in here preventing that because of a spring-loaded mechanism. And then this is attached here, and on the other end is where your key is pulling on the cable, therefore pulling this uh, via the key in the trunk latch. So this spring is resting right here, placing tension on this lock plate, forcing it in this uh, direction. So it rests inside of here, like so, and then that essentially locks into here, but this has got to be that way, and there's your tension point. So visually in place, but without the lid, that's what it's going to look like. Okay, so this bridge right here swings back and forth and connects and disconnects with this uh, electrical plate right here, this circuit card. Hence all the wires going that way. And you'll see that action here in a minute. As well as the emergency egress part, but I'll have to put that back together here in a minute. So, let me put this here so that doesn't fall out. Okay, so there's a little bit of spring tension on this here. When you close the, when you push the button to open the trunk, this motor activates and rolls this around. And if you can see right down in there, there's a little red painted nub. It's right there. Okay, so we got an eye on that. I'm gonna put this back where it was. So now it's in the fully locked position. So you push the button and you literally see the trunk raising up. That's the string taken off of the uh, jam lock and just lifts that trunk up. So that little nub comes around and presses up against that finger piece right there. It's right there. It's supposed to push it into this lock plate, but it's not. It's just rolling right over the top of it but and just keeps spinning and by that point it should travel over to here and this flips open allowing you to release the trunk so what also happens now it's connecting to a different point 
on this plate. So when you go to shut the trunk, that latch hits this part, closing that, this snaps back into place because remember, this is spring loaded from this spring here, putting tension on this uh, direction, snapping in place. That's what, that's the click that you hear. Therefore, it activates the, electro, electrifies this bridge here. It activates the motor. So here comes our cog back around in there. And right now that cog is on the back side of the finger, which just rolls past the finger. And it just clicks out of place. The motor continues to roll. And now here's our concentric action pushing down on this, which therefore raises up on this lock latch and sucks the trunk down. So with a lot of force being placed on that, because you get too much stuff in the trunk, let's put this back to here and here, you get too much stuff in the trunk, the force of that concentric pushing down on that lock latch puts a lot of force going this way and therefore it's cracking that out. So when that happens, we think that the other thing I spotted with this gizmo, where's my little So when that happens, <clears throat> this more fingers. So when that separates, ah, because of the force, it pulls this other little piece out of its groove. So it's essentially sitting like so. Now, no matter how much you pull on that egress, it's not going to catch this piece to do what it's supposed to do upon pulling that handle or keying it in by putting pressure on that lock plate, swinging it out of the way so the trunk can open up. So if you got this crack, right here you may want to get it out of your trunk and get a new one because there's no amount of repairing on that so we'll go in real quick and just tear the remainder of this down with the concentric out of the way let's go ahead and pull this out which was also spring loaded as you saw so there's the nub that swings around it's upside down sorry there's the nub that swings around and it's supposed to catch this and push it more so out of the way but it's just rolling right over the top of it and not allowing it to go its full movement to swing this out of the way so this can pop itself open so there's another circuit board under under here that i think this is an emergency or a over type cutout because these are the contact points that travel across it. It's supposed to stop here, but if it doesn't, or sorry, right here, <laughs> where am I? So it's supposed to stop right here, but if it doesn't, it'll definitely stop out here because it travels too far and it's just an automatic cutout arena. But off of this piece here, it does lot. It does. Uh, it only travels so far. So it bottoms out on the one end, and bottoms out on the other end, because that notch stops on that little stop block that you can see in there. So to get the motor 
out of there and the transmission, you have to undo these three screws to get this plate out by essentially pulling on this connector, which is up under, which ties in to there. So that's basically its operation. I don't think there's any amount of repairing. I'm going to pull the one out of my car, which is exhibiting the same uh, problems that Foshi has in his video. And I'm going to try and maybe see if I can extend this a little bit, but you can see how it's a little worn right here. Either that or this, or there's just, it opens up play on a worn pin which you can see it's worn right in this area from that movement and it's just not enough to capture it. So maybe the whole problem fixes just by replacing this pin right here. Because you can see the wear on it and it's just enough to open up that tolerance. You can see how it's worn on the one side, not the other. So anyway, that's, that's about it for this little guy.